Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I would like to talk about so-called improper definite integrals. Well, it's those integrals which don't behave properly. All right, so let me just make a little reminder to you. Um, how did we define our integral, our def definite integral? Well, we defined it this way. Let's consider we have a function, f of x, which is defined on some interval a, b. Now, we assume that a, b is a segment, a closed segment of real numbers, and function f of x is relatively smooth, let's put it this way. Well, smooth in terms of uh, at least it's continuous. Well, actually, sometimes we might need differentiability, but continuous for sure. Now, it means basically that for some other segments, which means, uh, for instance, segments, well, intervals rather, which include infinity, it's not defined. Think about this way. How actually we proceed to define this integral? We divided this into n pieces, then we took the value of the function, so basically it was something like this. This is xi, this is so-called Riemann sum, and then we go to a limit as the number of these intervals which we have divided our segment goes to infinity and each one of them goes to zero. Now, if for instance A or B are infinity, which means just there is no margin on the left or on the right, we can't do anything like this. Because the number of, if, if you have a fixed uh, length interval, finite length interval, and we have an infinite interval to cover then that there will be infinite number of these small intervals already. I mean, the whole process of dividing and then and the whole uh, theory actually would not work because we can't really go into a limit because it's already an infinite number of, of, of intervals. So, that's not really good. So, basically, our definition is not good for cases like this. Another type of case which our definition is not good is if the function is not this type, but for instance this type, it asymptotically goes um, to this vertical line to infinity, plus infinity or minus infinity, etc. Uh, why? Because this value f of xi, uh, if xi corresponds to this point where the asymptote actually is, then it's infinity. So again, we can't really do this. So we have to cover certain cases of the function which seems to be a reasonable function, um, which means we probably should know, for instance, let me just give you this example. For instance, our function is like this. Is there a concept of area under this curve? Well, maybe yes. I mean, if the function is very, very fast going to zero, then even with an infinite tail, the area might still be finite, and it is, by the way. So, somehow we have to um, make different definitions for cases like this. And similarly, if, for instance, not, if, for instance, we have function which goes to infinity, let's say like this, and like this. Maybe they are so close to this vertical line that the area of this seemingly infinite, of seemingly infinite height doesn't really present an infinite um, area. Maybe it's a finite area, and so the whole thing would be finite. So anyway, I would like to make 
just a point that our definition of definite integral, which is called Riemann integral, and these are Riemann sums, is not good for cases like this. And this lecture is devoted to expansion of our definition towards covering of situations like, like this. So that's what we are talking about. This is improper integral. So we are going to define improper integrals which are not something which we can call the classical Riemann integral from um, the functions. All right? So, this lecture about improper integrals is part of the um, advanced math course for uh, students of high school. It's presented on unizor.com. I recommend you to watch this lecture from uh, this site. Uh, the site has um, notes for each lecture, quite detailed notes, which you can use as a textbook. And uh, uh, some of the topics which uh, are presented on this site have exams. Well, not all of them yet, but it's coming, it's coming. All right, so let me start, and let me start from defining different types of improper integrals. Okay, my first example of improper integral is when one of the um, margins of the segment where the function defined is infinity. Okay, let's consider, let's say a is equal to infinity. How can we define integral um, minus infinity, I should say, because it's a left boundary, right? How can we define integral from minus infinity to b f of x dx? And let's consider that there is no um, points where f at x itself goes to infinity. So we are talking about only one uh, particular distortion from our original definition. Distortion only on the left boundary, which is in, uh, minus infinity. Um, this is a, a finite point, and the function is um, also finite and continuous. All right? So in this case, I define it, this is a definition, as a limit from a to b of function f at x dx as a goes to minus infinity. I mean, it's really very, very logical kind of definition. If you have to, this is minus infinity, this is your function, and this is b. So if you would like to define the area here, well, let's cut it here, define this area using the regular integration, and then start moving this. If this limit exists, and this is a very, very important if, if this limit exists, then we can say that this integral exists and it's actually this limit. And it does make sense. Now, sometimes the limit might not exist, in which case this integral does not exist either, obviously, right? So this is my first definition. Now, my second definition obviously is very similar and it's related to the right margin of this segment. What if b is equal to infinity? So we need to calculate this. Now, obviously you understand this is limit from a to b as b goes to infinity. Same thing. If this integral exists, uh, well, integral exists if the limit exists, uh, then we are saying that this is a definition of this integral. So now we have covered uh, the definition in case my margin are either one or another equal to infinity. What if both of them are equal to, in to infinity? How can I define this? 
Well, here's how I propose to define it. Now this is one of the possible ways to define this. So I just choose a point zero. I can choose point x is equal to 1 or 25 or whatever. Basically I divide my whole straight line from minus infinity to plus infinity into uh, two different intervals. One of them has the right boundary and no left boundary, which is this one. And another has the left boundary but no right boundary. Now these two I have already defined in the previous couple of cases, right? Now, so this is, you can just substitute b, uh, well, b is actually equal to 0, and this substitute to a, take this limit from a to 0, and have a uh, limit, go, uh, limit by a go, go, going to minus infinity. And this I can substitute, well, a is equal to 0, so b is equal to plus infinity, which means I ha have to have it from, from 0 to b, and have a limit as b go goes to plus infinity, all right? So, I have defined this, this integral through these two. Now, again, only if these two exist, because it might not. If either of them doesn't exist, then this doesn't exist. Now, is it possible, here is a very important question, if I will take another point, instead of zero, if I will take another point, I don't know, p, can I do it this way? Any other point P? Well, actually, yes. And it's the same thing. Because if, if my integral from minus infinity to zero exists, then my integral from minus infinity to P also exists. Because the difference is, I have to just add integral from minus infinity to zero, I have to plus integral from zero to, to p, and then I will get from minus infinity to p, right? And this always exists, so I don't have any problem with this, because it's a finite interval, right? And same thing here. Uh, in, in this particular case, I, uh, I have from zero to p, and then from p to plus infinity, all right? <coughs> so, in both cases, I mean, in this particular case, I can have it this way. I just made a mistake. It's, it's zero, so zero p integral. Okay, that's how it is. So, this is equal to sum of these from p to zero and then from zero to p. This is equal to sum of these, from minus infinity to zero, then from zero to p. And this is equal to zero, right? Because these are opposite uh, uh, limits of integration, and we know that the sign is changed uh, to opposite if I change the direction of integration. So I can represent this in this way, and this part is, also, is equal to zero. That's why the result would be, if a result exists, then it will be the same whether I put any number p here or number 0 or anything like that. All right? Okay, so I think we have covered all the different possibilities of indefinite uh, interval of integration. Left boundary can be infinity, right boundary can be infinity, or both can be infinity. Now let's cover situation when the function itself goes to infinity. And we will do very similarly. We will use limits. So let's assume that so far we have a finite uh, segment, but the function somewhere here goes to infinity, something like this. Well, let me do even simpler than that. Let me just have only one end. So only at the A 
it goes to infinity. How can I define area under this curve? Well, very, very simply and more or less um, analogously to uh, my previous couple of definitions. Let me cut here. Let's say this is A plus D. Now, A plus D is a point from which on my function is finite. So I can always have integral from A plus D to B of function f of x dx, right? Now, this is fine. That's no problem. Because in this interval, this integral exists, so I can calculate it. And now I will take the limit as D goes to zero which means my point goes closer and closer to this one. If this limit exists, then this is the definition of integral from A to B of our function f of x dx. Now, analogously, if my function has infinite, goes to infinity at B, and finite on this particular case. So instead of doing this, I will do this, minus g. So I will step to the left. And again, my integral from a to b minus d always exists and defined, right? So I can always take this integral and take the limit as d is equal to 0, uh, d converges to 0, and if the limit exists, then I can just call that this is an integral from a to b. Well, finally, if you have this particular point of infinity somewhere in the middle, Let's say this is B and this is C. And I have to define integral from A to C. Well, I will int define it as integ integral from A to B plus integral from B to C. Now this is, which is, this is already defined because in this case my function takes uh, infinite value at the right boundary of this particular segment and they know how to do it using this type of things with b minus d. Now in this case from b to c it's on the left where a function goes to infinity and I do it as I did before from a plus d, right? So these two are already defined using my previous logic which means I define this as a sum of these if and only if these two exist in terms of their limits, corresponding limits. So, basically what I would like to say that I have defined all the different peculiar cases um, and uh, my definite integral is defined in a broader range of segments which can be inf infinite or function which can have certain points where it's going to infinity plus infinity or minus infinity, whatever, doesn't really matter, all right? While at the rest of the points, it's fine and finite and con uh, continuous, etc. Now, if there are more than one point of peculiar behavior of our function, then again, we will just define, as long as there are finite number of these uh, peculiar points where the function goes to infinity, I can always d divide my big segment into small ones and calculate integral in each each one of them uh, considering it exists then I will just summarize them together and now it's about time we will just go to a couple of examples if you don't mind all right so I will just show how to to do this so I have only two examples one for infinite segment uh, rather interval I should really say. The word segment is not correct. So one is interval. So my function is um, 1 over um, x square which is this 
and uh, I will integrate it uh, from zero to infinity. Okay, so integral from a, uh, sorry, from zero to b of this particular function equals. Now, what is um, indefinite integral of one over x squared? Well, it's minus one over x, right? One over x derivative would be one over x squared uh, with a minus sign, and minus this minus will neutralize that minus, and I have to substitute zero and b, right? Uh, actually, it would be probably better if I will do it from 1 I mean this is 1 but this is 1 because I don't want to have 0 in my um, denominator so let's start from 1 from 1 to infinity this so from 1 to b from 1 to b um, So, if I will substitute b, it would be minus 1 over b. And if I substitute 1, the 1, minus, minus 1 over 1, right? That's what will be. If I substitute b, it would be 1 over b with a minus sign. So this is the Newton Leibniz formula, right? So I, I took the indefinite integral and anti antiderivative and have to substitute first the upper uh, limit and then minus substitute the lower limit. So which is equal to this is one minus and the minus so it's one, one minus one over b. Now what happens if b goes to infinity? Well, this disappears, right? And I have only one. So this integral is equal to one. Well, not this, this integral with infinity here. So this is an example of how I apply my new definition. The integral which involves infinite right limit I have basically replaced with integral with a finite right limit, calculated it, and then went to a limit as my right boundary goes to infinity. So that's my first example. Now, my second example is related to function which goes to infinite value on its segment where it's defined. Well, again, it's not even segment. So consider the function um, logarithm x. This is 1. That's how, that's how logarithm x behaves, right? This is a natural logarithm. If function is equal to 1, I mean, if argument is equal to 1, the function is equal to 0, and that's how it behaves. So, I would like to know if this area exists. But you see, this is where the function goes to infinity. So, my question is, I mean, obviously, the, the area can be large and negative, by the way. Uh, but maybe it's large, which goes basically to infinity or it's still kind of a finite number. So how can I find out? Well, what I would like to know is integral from 0 to 1, from 0 to 1, function logarithm x, dx. 
Now, again, zero is this peculiar point where the function is not defined, basically, right? So I have to define it as a limit from a to 1, logarithm a x dx, as a goes to 0, right? This is a. So this is definitely a finite piece, so I can calculate it. So let's calculate it. Now, what's the indefinite integral of logarithm x? Well, I happened to prepare for this lecture, and I remember, but it was actually a subject of one of the previous lectures where we were talking about derivatives. So we did actually talk about this. So the um, it's x logarithm x minus x. That's what my uh, indefinite integral is. Just for a check, let's do derivative of this. Derivative of this, it's, pro uh, it's a product, so it's derivative of this, which is 1, times another, plus x, times derivative of logarithm x, which is 1x, minus derivative of x, minus 1. Now, this is x and x, this is 1 and minus 1, so this is cancelling, and I have only logarithm x, you see? So this is the correct uh, indefinite integral. <coughs> okay, so now I have to substitute upper and lower um, limits of the integration. Now, if I put upper 1, so logarithm of 1 is 0, so this is minus 1. Minus, if I will put a, it would be a logarithm a plus a, right? Minus and minus in front it would be plus. Now, as i goes to 0, what happens with these members? Well, this obviously goes to 0. Now, I'm also stating that a times logarithm a also goes to 0 as a goes to 0. How do I know this? Well, first of all, I know that logarithm is a slower changing function than the, uh, than the power function. So that makes me to believe that, when th but that's an, in, an, an infinity. Now, whenever we are going to zero, let me just do something similar. I will do this, logarithm a divided by one eighth. Right, this is the same thing. Now I can use the L'Hopital's uh, rule. So instead of finding the limit of this ratio, I can say that this is the same as limit of their derivatives. And what is their derivatives? Derivative of logarithm a is 1 over a. Derivative of this is 1 over a squared with a minus. So this is limit of minus a, right? As a goes to 0, which is 0. So this is also 0. And what's remaining? minus 1. So that's the answer. That's my integral. Now, by the way, why is it minus? Well, because the function is negative, right? So whenever the function is negative, obviously, all um, the, 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 the area so-called under the function is actually above the function. That's why it's, it's negative. But anyway, this is how we are um, taking integrals in case of either one of the or both margins are infinite, or the function takes um, uh, is undefined actually in one of the points and goes to infinity in this particular point. Um, so this is what, what's called improper integrals. They are improper because we cannot really use a classic definition which is using these Riemann sums of f of xi times delta xi. 
um, we have to really use some other mechanism to define these um, so-called improper integrals. And once we have defined them, um, we basically can calculate it using the, the same formula, Newton, uh, Newton Leibniz formula, for instance, or in any other way, whatever. Okay, I do suggest you to, um, to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com and um, uh, try to take these two integrals just yourself, whatever I was just doing. Um, they are presented uh, uh, as, as part of the notes with solution, but don't, don't look at the solution. Try to do it yourself, it's always helpful. And uh, I might actually think about some maybe exam questions, which I will also later on put uh, onto the website. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.